Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Mitchell Ringos. Multiple members of the Thunder Bay Police blocked off a section of Cameron Street today while undertaking what looked to be an investigation involving multiple officers. The 200 to 300 section of Cameron Street was blocked off by multiple marked and unmarked police vehicles, including the command post vehicle at around 4 p.m. when TBT News staff arrived on scene. There were also a half dozen officers in full tactical gear gathered on the street. At the moment, there has been no word from the Thunder Bay Police on what exactly occurred on Cameron Street, but we will be sure to keep you updated as soon as possible. The emergency department at Margaret Cautionor Memorial Hospital in Red Lake was closed for 24 hours this weekend. And MPP Sol Mamakwa is asking the Ford government to act and send staff resources immediately. The municipality declared a state of emergency on Friday due to a physician shortage. And on Saturday at 8 a.m., the hospital was forced to close until 8 a.m. on Sunday. Fortunately, there were no fatalities in the 24-hour period. However, several residents had to drive two hours to the nearest hospital in Dryden for emergency care. To Wetanung MPP Sol Mamakwa says that the situation is unacceptable and that a system must be put in place so that Northerners will be able to access the health care they need. I don't think if you're in Toronto area, uh, people don't, who make these policy decisions do not understand who who we are and what we're about and how the systems are. And I think uh, we need to be able to have a, uh, create a system that, that works for, for us and uh, created by us, and that, that, that's so important. Officials with the Thunder Bay Archives Office will bring information to City Council on Monday night regarding a proposed $3.5 million expansion of the facility on Vicker Street. The project would also modernize the 32-year-old building and increase its capacity to last another four decades. Kurt Black has the details. Since its completion in 1990, the City Archives Office on Vicker Street has been the home to countless historical and cultural documents that outline civic decisions over the past 150 years. Information that is key to the city's future, according to Archives Records and Privacy Manager Matt Sibalski. Well, it's important for a number of reasons. One is that, you know, you can't go to where you're going to unless you know where you've, you've come, and this tells you where we've, where we've come from. Also housed among the rows on rows of files are important legal documents that have proved pivotal throughout the years, most notably when the James Street Swing Bridge caught fire in 2013. We were able to help our legal services by finding documents that uh, helped the city in this case including that 1906 agreement with the Grand Trunk Pacific, which said that the, build, build, the bridge was to be maintained in perpetuity. But with the facility taking in around 400 boxes of documents a year, they are set to run out of space in 2023. And that's why city staff are proposing a 4,200 square foot addition that will bring the archives building into the 21st century, featuring temperature and humidity controls, and most importantly, modern mobile shelving that will provide enough storage for the next 40 years. And if everything goes to plan, Zabalski envisions the project being completed within the next two years. So the first year um, would be all planning and engineering uh, to plan the building. Um, and, then the, and then in 2024, we would start construction and hopefully can com complete it in 2024. Council will be presented with all the necessary information on Monday night and a formal proposal will be included in the 2023 and 2024 city budgets. Kurt Black, TBT News. The Ford government was challenged at Queen's Park this past week regarding the Northern Health Travel Grant. Rising gas prices are bringing the issue to the forefront again as local NDP member Judith Monteith Farrell called on the Premier to fix the grant program and adjust the payment rates to reflect increasing costs for patients who have to travel south or to Manitoba. Minister of Health Christine Elliott did not address the rates, but she did respond on the matter of wait times for reimbursement. The rising cost of living is putting pressure on everyone. The people that need to travel for medical care are struggling. Many of them are on disability, especially when they have to pay up front, they have to wait for their reimbursement, 
and then it doesn't cover the costs. It's putting people into debt, and others just can't afford to get the health care they need. In November 2020, the program introduced a revised application form that allows clients the option to provide banking information to receive approved program payments by direct deposit. This is certainly a great improvement on what used to happen in the past, where people had to wait for long periods of time in order to receive reimbursement. And this is especially helpful for repeat users of the program and will eliminate the wait to receive a check by mail. The Northern Travel Grant is a topic frequently brought up by the Thunder Bay Atacokan MPP who calls it a major issue for her riding and the rest of the North. After being delayed by a year due to COVID-19, the numbers of those experiencing homelessness in the Kenora District are out and it shows a considerable drop in the number of people considered homeless. Those numbers are being welcomed by the Region Services Board which indicate that strategies they've been employing work. Adam Riley has the details. The affordable housing shortage has certainly become a crisis across the north and especially in our communities. In 2018, the Kenora District Services Board announced 393 people in the district were experiencing homelessness, with the largest concentration in the communities of Kenora, Dryden and Sioux Lookout, with 223, 67 and 66 people respectively. Flash forward to 2021, where the survey process was shifted to bring it in line with other districts with a snapshot in time model which showed that number dropped to 221 people experiencing homelessness in the district. And once again, Kenora, Dryden and Sulakout being focal points with 121, 37 and 36 people respectively. The survey numbers show that of the 221 people, a majority of respondents were between the ages of 36 and 55, followed closely by the 26 to 35 age group, with 65 of those people stating they had first experienced homelessness below the age of 25 and a whopping 88% of them identified as Indigenous. KDSB Chief Administrative Officer Henry Wall says overall, the drop in numbers reflects the effort the board has put in place with various partnerships over the last three years. In terms of having housing specifically built for the purpose of ending chronic homelessness, and uh, you know whether it's more supportive housing in Sioux Lookout, Kenora, Red Lake, transitional housing in, in other communities, we're starting to see that that is making a difference, that we are seeing less people experience chronic homelessness. We're seeing less people go through the shelter system. Wall notes since 2011, the demand for affordable housing has grown by 346%, which is why housing projects have been given top priority to counter the issue. He says when he moved to the region 15 years ago, affordable housing was being directed towards low-income families and seniors. You fast forward now, and that conversation can include healthcare professionals, nurses, police officers, paramedics, social workers who cannot find affordable housing or access to housing. And that is making it more difficult to address homelessness is what we do need fundamentally is more homes. And then the other supports can, can do its job as well. Wall says the focus for the next few years is to continue building new housing units with projects in several communities underway or in the planning process and believes with that strategy, homeless numbers will continue to decrease in the district. Adam Riley, TBT News. Officers with the OPP in the Scriber area got a very unusual call for assistance as they had to round up some runaway piglets. It's believed these little piggies got out of their trailer at a truck turnaround near Scriber on Thursday. Officers came to the scene on Friday and engaged in a brief 45-minute foot chase before the animals were tired out and snuggled up for a snooze in the backseat of the cruiser. They were then taken to a hobby farm in the Rossport area where the owners later returned to where they were apprehended and found two more piglets. Now joined by sports anchor Kurt Black, and there's so much happening in the sports world, but especially locally, the last chance for our two favorite teams to play each other. And boy, did they put on a show for their final game of the regular season last night, Mitch. We'll have those highlights right after the break. 